before we move on to the invalid forms, here's one more valid conditional form that you should know. It's sometimes called hypothetical syllogism or hypothetical argument. Or more informally, it's sometimes called reasoning in a chain. It's obvious why it's called this when you see the argument form in action. This is hypothetical syllogism or reasoning in a chain. It's what you get when you chain a series of conditionals together where the consequent of one becomes the antecedent of another. You can chain as many of these together as you like. Note that both the premises and the conclusion are conditionals. In this argument form, we're never actually asserting that A or B or C is true. All we're asserting is a set of hypothetical relationships. If A was true, then B would follow. And if B was true, then C would follow. And from this, we can assert that if A was true, then C would follow. In logic and mathematics, this kind of relationship is called a transitive relationship. Some relationships are transitive and some aren't. Tallness, for example, is transitive. If Andrew is taller than Brian and Brian is taller than Chris, then Andrew must be taller than Chris. On the other hand, being, say, an object of admiration is not transitive. If Andrew admires Brian and Brian admires Chris, there's no guarantee that Andrew will admire Chris. At any rate, what this argument form shows is that the relation of logical implication is transitive. If A logically implies B and B logically implies C, then A logically implies C. This argument form is often used to represent chains of cause and effect, like in this example. If we assume that hitting the cue ball will cause the red ball to hit the blue ball in a certain way, and if the red ball hitting the blue ball in this way causes the blue ball to go into the pocket, then we can say that if we hit the cue ball in this certain way, the blue ball will go into the pocket. This is precisely the kind of reasoning that a pool player is doing when they're setting up a combination shot like this. They have to reason through a chain of conditionals to figure out how to best strike the cue ball. It should be obvious, but in case it's not, you can also use this form to generate a modus ponens argument. In this example, we can see that the argument is valid but we're actually using hypothetical syllogism in our head to derive a necessary premise. From premises one and two, we get the assumed premise, if A then C. Then from this new premise, plus the affirmation of A, we can derive C using modus ponens. Now, the order of the terms is important. The argument form above, for example, is not valid. This is arguing backwards with conditionals. The direction of logical dependency doesn't work this way. We'll talk about this more in the next tutorial. The key point is that with conditionals, the only valid inference is from antecedent to consequent. You can't go the other way. So just to summarize, this is a no-no. Here's an example. Let's assume the following conditionals are true. If John studies hard, then he'll pass the test. If he passes the test, then he'll pass the class. Now assume that John does indeed pass the class. Does it follow with deductive certainty that John studied hard for that test? No, it doesn't. Maybe the teacher gave him a very easy test that day that John could pass without studying hard. Maybe he bribed the teacher to pass him. There are lots of possible ways that these premises could be true and the conclusion still false. On the other hand, if we knew that he studied hard for the test, we could validly infer that he passed the class. That would be the valid form of reasoning in a chain.